Now, let's move away from the turmoil of Westminster politics and look at an issue which touches many lives. An East Midlands couple is campaigning for parents whose children are stillborn to be able to call for an inquest into their deaths. The government is reviewing the issue and it's being led by one of our guests, Ed Argar. Sarah and Jack Hawkins say they want to make sure grieving parents of stillborn children get the right to find out at a coroner's court how their child died. And just to warn you, their interview contains pictures of their child, which they're happy for us to share. So in April 2016, I was in the late stages of my pregnancy. We were really excited about our first baby coming home. Um, the day after my due date, I started con contractions. Um, over a six day period, these contractions continued. I had 12 contacts with the hospital each time them telling me that I wasn't in labour and to stay at home. On the final admission I went in because something was hanging out of me. They scanned me and um, then they couldn't find Harriet's heartbeat so they got a doctor who scanned and said I'm sorry your baby's dead. We needed answers. We had nobody coming back to us explaining what had gone on. So we approached the clinical commissioning group, the people who pay for the service that the hospital provides um, and they were horrified. After two years of um, investigations, they have finally admitted liability. You know, no one should have to go through what we have been through. No one should have to wait two years to bury their daughter. It, it, it's horrific. We believe that if coroners were able to investigate stillbirths, that we would not have had to take on that fight. We'd have had the coroner's office able to take on that fight for us. They're independent, they're open, they're public, um, and they're on nobody's side but trying to find the truth. Harriet was alive, she was kicking inside me. Her foot was stuck under my rib for the last month. Um, and you know, she, she is and was our daughter and to have someone tell me that she's not good enough for an inquest because she, she didn't take a breath when she was born is, it's, it's just horrific. It just adds to all the distress. Well, we're joined now by Janet Baker, the solicitor representing the Hawkins family. And Janet, obviously, we heard there from the Hawkins, but this tragically is happening to, to other families too. It's happening uh, all over the country. We're dealing with a large number of cases involving stillbirth and uh, problems where babies survive, but then they're severely damaged. There are lots of investigations going on as Coom Taff, um, Morecambe Bay and, and various others. They all have a theme um, to, to poor care and missed opportunities to save a situation. And in many of these cases, there's also a theme that the initial investigation under the serious untoward investigation reporting system is failing and the hospitals are carrying out their own investigations. Sometimes they're not being done in cases where they should be. As in Harriet's case, an investigation was done which was woefully inadequate and didn't identify And sometimes uh, identify these things take criticism. a long time too, don't they? I mean, Nottingham University Hospital's NHS Trust has reiterated its unreserved apologies for the shortcomings in care. Following a review of maternity services, they say that leadership there has been strengthened and they have improved the way parents are involved in the investigation process. That's what they've told us. Ed Argar, um, we mentioned that there is a government review into this issue being led by yourself where's that at so we've gone out to consultation on this a stillbirth is a tragedy that can have a profound effect on bereaved parents and families and while nothing can take away that pain we believe and as we saw in that uh, that very moving piece we believe that transparency and knowing what has happened and the ability to learn lessons to help prevent future stillbirths can play a part in helping bereaved parents. So we launched a consultation, which I'm leading on the 26th of March this year, into exactly this, about giving coroners the power to investigate and hold inquests into stillbirths at full term, 37 weeks, and that consultation closes on the 18th of June, after which I, as the Minister and my officials, will look at what comes back from that and will then respond to that consultation well, later from, in the summer. From what Janet was just saying before, it, this isn't just a case of one family going through this. There are numerous families having to, to cope with this. Yes, yeah, so in 2016, there were, I think, 3,112 stillbirths. Now, 
Not all of those would have been at full term, but it gives you a sense of the scale. And we're very clear that this consultation is the right way forward to give parents that opportunity to have an independent figure, a coroner, part of the judicial system, look into it and hopefully give them some answers and give them a voice in that process. Um, Chris, Ed's told us what the government's doing. Presumably you'd back that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's just an issue about providing answers for parents, important though that is. I think it would also be incredibly valuable to uh, have a coroner with the disciplines associated with a, an inquest uh, to make recommendations to you know, improve and change practice. That, I think, would be a really important and practical step forward. And so I hope that you know, that will be the outcome, that the government will take that on board, because and that, I think, would really would be really very really beneficial. And that's an important point there, isn't it, Janet? It's because they can make recommendations. Mm -hmm. It's very important. I mean, I think the key things from this are, my, my understanding is there are approximately 120 stillbirths a year which would come within the proposed investigation that is those where it occurs during labour and where it's thought that the stillbirths due to some neglect of care. Those are the important ones that the coroners would need to investigate. And I think there are a number of positives if a coroner was involved. The first is obviously for the family because it's, it's a tragedy in each individual case and it's very sad for any family who's, who loses a child in any circumstances. But I think it's also very important that lessons are learned and that going forward the same mistakes are not repeated so that other babies are born alive, don't, are not still born. Are you encouraged by what you've heard same. from the Minister? I'm, I'm very encouraged by what I've heard from both MPs. There's also a third thing, I think, which is the cost to the NHS at present, because mm -hmm. I think NHSR this year has set aside over 700 million for birth injury cases. That's obviously not just stillbirths, that's children who are damaged and, and live after birth and have lifelong care needs, well, but on, that's a on... vast amount of money. Of course. Oh, and on the subject of cost, there is a fear, though, Ed Argar, that even mm. if you made these reforms, that the resources wouldn't be there. Well, we've looked, at this, we've looked at this very carefully, and obviously it's a consultation, it's a very sensitive area, and it's right that we consult. And I agree entirely with, with Chris and with Janet about the lessons that can be learned. We've looked at what this would mean in terms of caseload for coroners around the country, and we are confident that if we go ahead with this following the consultation, the resources are there and that caseload can be managed and will help give that transparency and lessons learned we would look for. Briefly, how are they doing, Janet? How are they coping, the Hawkins? Jack Hawkins, you may know, is a hospital consultant who actually worked in Nottingham and Sarah is a senior neurophysiotherapist. Sadly, neither of them, due to the psychiatric injury mm -hmm. they suffered, have yet been able to return to work. Mm -hmm. But they are having therapy and oh, we wish them well. they're trying to come to terms with, with what's happened. Janet, thank you very much indeed for joining us mm -hmm. in the studio.